live from the Business Radio X studio, welcome to Time Well Spent with Julie Hullett, your source for inspiring stories of busy people who have made more time to do what they love. Now, here's your host, Julie Hullett. Hello, I'm so glad you're joining us, and I'm also so very glad to welcome my guest, Tyler King, personal chef and owner of Tastify here in Nashville. Welcome, Tyler. Hi, Julie. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure. Believe me. Um, I have a couple of questions for you, of course, right off the bat, but I want to start with the fact that I know that you grew up in St. Louis. Yeah, I did. And I'd like to know what you think about the Cardinals so far this year. (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah, great, uh, great year for them. They have three guys that are playing on the team that have been on it for like 20 years. Um, Yadier Molina, Adam Wainwright and Albert Pujols and Pujols left for a little while and came back, but it's kind of a funny year because these guys are, you know, old guys now and they used to be like Season. everyone's hero. And, and it's funny cause they're, they're kicking so much butt out there. And now like Yadier Molina and Albert Pujols who neither one of them can pitch, but both of them have gotten up <laughs> on the mound and pitched. They'll like be beating their opponent by like, you know, 15 points. And they're like, we'll pitch. And so <laughs> horrible pitchers, but it's kind of funny. Just like these guys are like in their forties and, um, really exciting to see, you know, my childhood heroes still playing for their final year all together. So yeah, it's all about the game. Yeah. Um, have you been to a game this year? No, uh, I've been to St. Louis twice and it's, it's just when, you know, we'll get to this later, but traveling when you're a business owner is, is hard and, and certainly leisure traveling is so no, no games this year or last year. Sadly. All right. We'll put that on your list of things to do. I will. Um, and then the other thing about St. Louis, I always think about my parents lived there for many years. Um, Ted Drews. Are you familiar with that? Oh, absolutely. Friends and <laughs> custard, right? Yes. And the best. <laughs> what's your favorite flavor there? You know, vanilla, like, you know, for me, frozen custard comes more about like the toppings and stuff. I, I love like frozen custard with, you know, an Oreo topping or something, but it, it's just it, they there there are places around Tennessee that sell it, but there's nothing like Ted Drews. It's Harrison. just the best. Yeah. And one thing I think is really um, creative on his part is in the fall he sells Christmas trees when it's off seasons <laughs> for the custard. He sells yeah. Christmas trees. I think that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Expanding his revenue sources. Exactly. It's always good to have other streams. Um, well, tell me um, about. Tastify and how you got from St. Louis to Nashville to Tastify. Yeah, uh, great question. So I was in high school and I played the guitar a little bit and I knew that I didn't want to play guitar forever, but I liked music and I found a really great music business program at a university in Nashville called Belmont. Mm -hmm. Um, And that lasted about six months. Um, I kind of got a look at the industry and some potential internships and realized it it, it wasn't really the side of things that I wanted to be on either. Um, And maybe the music industry just wasn't for me after all. And so the only other thing that I knew how to do was cook my entire career at that point, you know, which was a fairly short one at that point was in restaurants. And I really enjoyed restaurants and I thought, Hey, maybe there's a way I can make money at this. And so I quickly, you know, my sophomore year, I think, or maybe even second semester freshman year, changed my major to entrepreneurship and rode that all the way through graduation. And when I graduated, I got back into restaurants. And during college, I was working full time for, you know, corporate catering company. And uh, and I was pretty fed up with corporate at that point. So I got back into restaurants when I graduated and realized that you know, every, pretty much every existing food business was just taking advantage of their employees. And, and I was fed up and I was working, you know, 70 hours a week. I was 22 years old. My back was hurting. I I was not making good choices outside of work. And before I knew it, I, I was like, I, I had to make a change. So I jumped ship, started the business and decided to do everything a little bit differently. Like I, I overpaid all my employees and, um, and put them first and then 
wanted to connect more with my customers, which I didn't get to do in a kitchen space in a restaurant. So, you know, I, I, that was kind of how everything came together. I, I knew I wanted to start a business and, and personal chef seemed to kind of check all my boxes when I was 22. So, <laughs> well, tell me what, what I'm wondering here, what was going through your mind that very first day? Like you get an LLC, right? And then you jump in. And I, I mean, I, I, tr- I believe there's two strong emotions there, but tell me what yours were. Oh, I was trembling with fear. <laughs> um, I mean, it, it almost like makes me it, like makes me cringe to even think, think about, about you know, I just remember dropping what to me at the time was a lot of money, you know, it was like $300 to or something to, to get an LLC. And I think after it was all said and done, I dropped like a thousand dollars on licenses and and getting established and um and building out a brand and i mean luckily my roommate was able to help me build a website and and develop a logo and and all that and you know he just wanted to be a part of something and i didn't like just for free he just wanted to help on a project nice and uh so i got i lucked out but you know that that was scary and Mm -hmm. It's not like I had any customers yet, which is like rule number one. Like if you're going to start a business, you have customers before you start. And uh, so it it was, it was definitely square one when I started square negative one, maybe. (laughs) I always think of joy and terror. Those two things hold Mm. hands for me when I think about that first day. So yeah, yeah, very similar experience there. So being a personal chef, you make a thousand decisions a day, you know, how much, sauce, how long to leave this in, where do I put this plate? Um, what, tell me what a typical day is like for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we do events a lot of days of the week still. Um, and, and even me, like I, I have you know, a couple of people that can go out and do events on their own now, but even with those people in those places, I'm still pretty boots on the ground. And so I, I tend to be up kind of late and I, I do kind of wake up early still maybe around like seven or so, but I really like to ease into my day. I'll, uh, I'll start off with, you know, coffee and toast or something. And I, I like to exercise. So I have a personal trainer. I had back surgery last year and, and this personal trainer's helped me sort of recover. And so, um, exercise has become pretty important, not just for feeling better, but also for just my quality of life oh, and, yeah. and getting away from work. So, um, yeah, uh, that's like kind of a typical day for how it starts. And then after breakfast and working out or whatever, I will, um, I'll start on admin and I'll start returning phone calls and getting back on inquiries and touch base with my assistant. Um, she usually takes all of our bookings, but there, it seems like there's always some custom request, which is, you know, what we sort of encourage, like, can you guys do Chilean sea bass or something? And though it's not on our menu, like, yeah, obviously. So, um, just kind of putting out that kind of stuff, working on customer acquisition and, and marketing and finance some days. And (laughs) I mean, any business owner knows that you have to wear about a hundred hats a day. And so that's how, that's kind of the routine after that. We'll, if it's an event day, we'll shop and prep and go to the event and admin kind of falls to the wayside a little bit, but, um, yeah, that's how it goes. Okay. And I should probably um, just clarify here, in addition to being a personal chef where you're actually behind the stove and prepping and all the things that go with that, you have event businesses where a section of your business rather where you are out providing dinners for events, corporate catering, things like that as well. Correct? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we were learning along the way that we would be the caterer for an event at someone's home or in some corporate space. And they would call us with their frustration on finding a ballet service or call us with their frustration on finding somebody to do florals. And I was like, you know, it, it turned into, well, I know a lady that does those cause we do events all the time. And, you know, I think sometime around last year, I decided we need to be capitalizing on this. Like we need to just be like a one-stop shop for people that want to throw an event. Like, because we have the contacts and if all it is, is truly just making a call and let it, and filling it in the, you know, the gaps here and helping these people even think of things that they haven't thought about, like valet parking and, um, 
you know, so on and so forth, then maybe we can really make this experience more memorable associated with Tastify. And, you know, everything kind of supports Tastify, but that's just another revenue stream for us. So that's true concierge service, a, a word after my own heart there, because you are offering those things to people. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a busy, busy day and a busy lifestyle you're describing. So how have you figured out to find a balance between work and having a personal life? <laughs> um, you know, balance is, is has always been a big part of of what I've been trying to do. You know, when I was 22 years old, for example, working in a restaurant, like I was working 75, 80 hours a week sometimes and finding right. balance then was even harder. You know, now at least I have my mornings or you know, I'm not, at least I'm not getting home at 2 AM. Um, so I, I do think that the balance is still a challenge and always will be for me, just the nature of the job. Like I'm working every weekday on admin or events, and then certainly every weekend on events, you know, our weekends are pretty packed. Um, I've learned to outsource some things, Good. which has freed up some time. Um, CPA helps with bookkeeping and I have an assistant that helps with, like I said, customer acquisition and, and some admin stuff. And I have a sous chef that handles a lot of the events. What and about so, your, I'm sorry. What about your uh, website? Are you doing that still? I'm still doing that. <laughs> Are you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, that involved, when I was doing it, it involved 1130 at night in front of the computer. And I just didn't want to do that anymore. So. Yeah. yeah I mean, we do make, I probably hop on there once a week and make a couple changes. I'll, I'll be on it from my phone, like sending somebody a link. And I'm like, I don't like the way these pictures look or, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's ever changing. But to me, I, I actually sort of enjoy that process. So oh, good. Good for yeah. you. my next question is if you um, had more time mm -hmm. in a day, what would you do with that? You know, I, I dream of travel a lot. Uh, it's, it is really hard. I, and I spoke about this a little bit earlier about the Cardinals, but I, I just think like going on a trip once in a while and not worrying about the opportunity cost. Um, that, I mean, the freedom to, to just go to Europe, you know, it's not even so much about the money anymore. We're finally breaking even and making money some days, some days. And to me, it's just about the time and, and, it's my time is valuable and as a business owner and uh, especially in events, like it's not like I can work from the road. So to say, I have to really be here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we had a great opportunity with the client to be their private chef, not a personal chef, like their family private chef in Martha's vineyard for uh, the summer for like two months. And it paid an, an extraordinary amount of money, more money than I may have even made doing events here. But, you know, that would have been awesome and I would have enjoyed it, but I owe it to my, you know, Nashville clients to be here. And so I think if I had a little bit more time, I would probably explore some of those options. I think those options would take me far. <laughs> and would be really fun. And, you know, I think that that would be one lifestyle, but I have a business to grow and until it's grown and, and self-sustainable, I think I'll be kind of stuck in this position, which I'm happy with, but I think that that would be one thing I'd do more of. Okay. Good answer. I love travel. It's one of my favorite things. I know. In your spare time, I understand there's, you like hiking, which is also on my list of things to do. What was the last hike you did? Um, well, I do like small hikes. I, I live walking distance to a hiking trail mm -hmm. here in Nashville. And, but my last enjoyable hike that was really challenging was in Asheville. Oh, I bet. Carolina. Yeah. yeah. It was, it, it was, un, it was in April, but it was unseasonably cold and really windy. Um, which I, I do kind of like a little chill out there just because I don't like to overheat. Right. And, um, I mean, about halfway up, it, it was, it ended up being fine, but it was so windy. I remember, you know, we're just driving up and up and up for like 30 minutes in this state park, like to get to the top of this thing. And, and there's like people sleeping in their cars out there and, um, 
great hike, but I, I remember opening the door to get out and start hiking. And like, I thought my door was going to fall off. Like it just like <laughs> swung open. It was so windy at the top of this mountain. Uh, but yeah, it, it was an intense hike. One of the tallest points in the, in that state. And it, I mean, breathtaking views and mm-hmm. just really neat. So nothing like that adrenaline nothing. rush when you're up there, you know? When, yeah. When you've made it. <laughs> yeah. The top is a great thing, <laughs> but then yeah. one has to come down. So there's that. Um, okay. So you, we've talked about, um, two things that I suggested you put on your list and one was going to a cards game. And mm-hmm. then you talked about more travel. Yeah. So how do you see yourself between now coming on June and December carving out a little time for those two things? Just a thought. Can you do that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think one way would be to look at last year's calendar. That's kind of a trick that we've been learning. Um, now, you know, the first couple of years were a little tough. Like the first year in business is obviously slow and and not any, any patterns necessarily. The second year in business was COVID for us. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, COVID is still, it still exists, but we, we kind of have at least a couple of years now under our belt that at least one year that under our belt that was normal, I, I guess, 2021. Right. And so looking back now, and then this year we're starting, starting to sort of carve out real, a normal kind of year. We're learning that um, there are slow weeks and they are sort of consistent. Uh, they usually don't come until March, but like March, we, we were pretty quiet and we were just kind of doing meal prep. And I think that by next March we can, you know, I know you said December, but I think we can at least get some, some things on the books by December um, and make next March, like a really good time for just getting out of town and, and getting all that done. Well, one thought I system. have, yeah. One thought I have about that is um, setting the expectation with your customers that during these two weeks in March, we will be closed next year. Just yeah, that. that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> you know, manage people's expectations and they're never disappointed. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. that's a great idea. Okay. And then the cards game, that's just a five hour road trip. So can't think of. Yeah, I just need to, I just need to do that. I need to go to a weekday game and just just, you know, turn on my vacation responder. <laughs> and then finally, is there anything you'd like to share that is a way you found to maximize your time for people out there? Because the perception is, you know, I mean, we all know we have the same amount of hours in a day, in a week, et cetera, et cetera. But there, it appears you're juggling pretty well. You're managing things, keeping plates in the air, no pun. But what would you say you've learned the most about time management in mm. your business? Yeah. Um, routine for me is, is a big one. Uh, you, the, the less guesswork that you have to do in a day, the better. And setting aside time, really specified time on your calendar where you're not available for meetings, you know, you're not, you're not necessarily like, you know, and, and to me, like admin and meetings do run together, but there is a time of, of each day that I'm just not available to anybody. And that is my time to catch up on admin. And if I'm caught up on admin, then to relax and have some me time. And that's equally important. And, and people forget, like, your mental health is something you need to savor. I think the first year in business was really hard because it was a nobody, you know, I went to school for starting a business and it was never spoken about. Right. Like, in my entrepreneurship alumni group, even, like, it's rarely talked about that it does take a a toll on your mental health. And if you don't set aside that time for yourself, it it will catch up. Agreed. And it it will affect your business. So 100%. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Now, real quickly, we're going to wrap up with a lightning round. I'm going to ask. Let's do it. This is what I've been looking forward to. (laughs) Okay. Number one, window or aisle? Window or aisle? Hmm. Plane. Yeah. Uh, I like window. Okay. Dinner Mm -hmm. in or dinner out? Dinner in. All right. Staycation or vacation? Vacation. Coffee or tea? Oh, tea. That's a, that's, that's a big one. I had a kidney stone a couple weeks ago. So (laughs) I I, I took coffee out of my diet and, and easily worked in tea. 
Probably a good move. Um, all right. And mountains or beach? Mountains for sure. Okay. And if you had a time machine, what mm. decade would you go visit? Uh, I feel like most people think of going straight to the past. I'm going straight to the future. I got to know what's going on. I I have to know. So I I think 10 years from now would be a great start. Okay, good answer. Thank you for that. And thank you so much for being here today. Um, I really enjoyed hearing your story and getting to know you just a little bit better. And um, I would like you to tell people how they can connect with you online and otherwise. Yeah. Uh, so our website is tasteifyfood.com. Tasteify is a play on the word testify. So uh, it just has an A in it instead of an E. Um, my my direct email is tyler at tasteifyfood.com. And my if you're looking to book, uh, my booking coordinator is info at tasteifyfood.com. So we look forward to hearing from you and, and be sure to mention the Julie Hullet podcast on there and we'll I'll, I'll throw in a, a 10% discount for you. Well, thank you. That's awesome. Thank you again for being with us. I really appreciate it, Tyler. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thanks, Julie. All righty. Now I'm going to give you a quick tip for some time well spent. As you know, time well spent is when you know what gives your life purpose and meaning and you spend your time doing those things. The true goal of time management is getting to do what's important to you. When you go from one task to the next, you start feeling like you're running in place and you neglect the people and purpose that truly give you joy. I try to give others the ability to be intentional with how they live their lives and experience that joy. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for tuning in to Time Well Spent with Julie Hullett. This show is brought to you by Julie Hullett Concierge, LLC, a personal concierge service in Nashville, Tennessee. Learn more at juliehullett.com.